So today we are going to talk about rational parent functions. These are also called reciprocal parent functions. You'll see them referred to as both reciprocal. So whether you see rational or reciprocal, they mean the same thing. The parent function looks like this, one over x. And we're going to graph this together. Okay, I'm gonna create a table on the side here. You can copy it if you want to, or you can just follow along. We're going to plug in a point, negative point one. Actually, let me go in order. We're gonna plug in negative 10, negative one, and then negative point one. We're increasing. Then we're gonna plug in zero, one, and 10. Okay, so guys, help me out with your calculator. Can you please plug in one over negative 10 and tell me what you get? Yep, negative point one. Please plug in a negative one right here. Tell me what you get. Negative one. What is one over negative point one? Can you guys type that into the calculator and tell me what that is? Negative 10, thank you, Ethan. We're not gonna plug in a zero actually because can you divide by zero? No, so this is not possible. I'm just gonna put not possible. The reason why is there is gonna be an asymptote there. Okay, let's plug in a one, what do we get? And plug in a 10, what do we get? 0.1, okay, we're gonna go ahead and graph this. Negative 10 and negative 0.1 is about right there. Negative 1, 1 is right here. And negative 0.1 and negative 10 is here. So guys, this is one side of your rational function. Those are the negative x values. Okay, now let's do the positive ones. 1, 1 is right here. 10.1 is like right here. Oh, we forgot to graph the other one. Let's also graph 0.1. So what's one over 0.1? 10, okay, so 0.1 is at 10 up here. This is the other side of your rational. So guys, all of the rational functions will look like this. That is the parent function. And this shape is called a hyperbola. Okay, so let's talk about the asymptotes because remember we could not equal zero because we cannot divide by zero. So let me draw our asymptotes. Here is the vertical asymptote. Notice guys, our graph gets very close to the asymptote and then it moves this way, it gets Starts over here and it gets very close to the asymptote, but it never touches it. So that red line, that is your vertical asymptote. That red line, what axis does it cross? The x-axis or the y-axis? Well, yep, it crosses x. Where? So that is your vertical asymptote at x equals zero. It went through the x-axis at zero. Now let's talk about the horizontal asymptote. This is the horizontal asymptote. It gets very close to that horizontal line I just drew. What axis did I just go through? Y, where? Zero. At zero. So notice guys, when it's vertical, it's gonna be an X equals equation. And when it's horizontal, it's gonna be a Y equals equation. Okay, finally, let's talk about domain and range. Your X values, it goes forever to the left, but then it stops at the asymptote. And then it begins at the asymptote on this side and goes forever to the right. Your X values can be any number except zero. So how we're gonna write this is, your domain is all the X values such that X is not zero. That's how that reads. Any X is okay as long as it's not zero. Same with the range. Notice your graph starts way down here, pointing to negative infinity, and it goes up to the asymptote. Then on this side, it's at the asymptote, and then it goes up to infinity. 
So it's all of the y values except for the asymptote. So y cannot be zero. Okay, so this is the parent graph. All of your graphs will look like this one here. Okay, however, we will be transforming it. So let's talk about transformations real quick. So this is the standard form of a parent function. I'm going to add the transformations in here. Okay. So H is the horizontal shift. K is the vertical shift. Okay, if there's a plus sign for horizontal, which way will it go? Good, thank you, Ethan. And if there's a minus sign? Right, thank you, guys. And for vertical, if it's a plus K, it goes up good and minus will go down. Okay, if A is negative, so guys, I'm gonna put a negative sign up here. If it's negative, what will that do? Yes, good, reflect. It's a reflection across the X axis. Okay, if this, if the absolute value, so it doesn't matter if it's negative or positive, if the absolute value of A is greater than one, it's a vertical stretch. But if the absolute value of A is between zero and one, it's a vertical compress. Okay, now let's talk about asymptotes. If it's vertical, what did we say the equation was? X equals good. So this will be x equals h, and horizontal will be y equals, and that will be k. And we'll look at an example. Okay, so guys, normally this is your parent function. Right there, your asymptotes are 0 and 0. However, give me an example uh, of how it could move. Okay, left 2. Down five. down five, perfect, thank you. So if it goes left two, down five, that means my new asymptote is here. Okay, so your T, this little T, it moves. Left two, down five. So then my new graph, I'll do it in blue, will look like this. Make sense? So we're gonna be transforming them, but it will still have the same shape. Now, let's add another thing in that we just spoke about. If there's a negative in the front, so if say it reflects across the x-axis, this down here will flip across this x-axis. So now it'll be facing this way. This one right here will now be facing this way. It's gonna reflect across the x-axis. So if it reflects, it will no longer be in the first and third quadrant, it'll be in the second quadrant and in the fourth quadrant, okay? So let's look at some examples. All right, so <laughs> number one, it says it reflect across the x-axis. So I know I'm gonna have a negative in the front and it went four units to the right. What will I put? Good, and it went three units down. So guys, what are my asymptotes? What will the x equals be? if it went to the right. Yep, x equals four because it went to the right. And what will my horizontal one be? Good, because it went down three. This one is your vertical asymptote, and this one is your horizontal asymptote. If I were to draw you a picture, it went right four and down three. So this is your asymptote here, and it reflected. So that means it would look like this. That's what it would look like. Okay, number two. Uh, let's see. You see the word reciprocal? That's the same as rational. So reciprocal parent function, rational parent function, vertically stretched by a factor of two, and it was translated seven units up and to the left one. So that is the equation. What is my asymptote? X equals negative one because it went to the left. 
and y equals 7 because it went up 7. So if I were to graph this, it went left 1 and up 7 up here. So this is your asymptote. If it's stretched, it won't affect really your domain and range. So this is what your graph would look like. Okay, you guys can do the next one. Y'all can do number three. Let's move on to trying to graph. I'm going to do number nine with you guys. All right. So can y'all list the transformations for me? Yep, it went up three, right five. And the first thing that it did was reflect across the x-axis, reflect over x-axis. Okay, so that means it's going to be looking something like this. It'll be on the other sides. It'll be in quadrants two and four. Okay, so it went up three and right five. So one, two, three, four, five, one, two, three. This is where your asymptotes are. So your graph will look like this. All right, so let's talk about your domain. What can X not be? Where's your asymptote? It can't be five. Mm -hmm. It can't be five. That's where your asymptote is. So your vertical asymptote is at five. You can be any number except you cannot touch five. Okay. Next, your range. What can you not be? Three. Because your horizontal asymptote is at three. It crosses the y-axis at three. We cannot touch that. Okay, so that's it. Now, there is a delta math activity after this. On delta math, let me show you. Do you guys see our equation up here? On delta math and in other formats, sometimes you might see the equation written like this. They'll put the three in front and put the fraction or the rational in the back. This is still up three and this negative in front of this fraction will still be a reflection. Do you guys see how these are still the same? And then it went right five. So guys, just because it's they swapped these two, it doesn't change, okay? You can say one plus two, or you can say two plus one. They're still the same, and that's what they did here. So on the Delta Math activity, don't get caught up when they switch the format on you, okay? Also, real quick, I'm going to erase this stuff. How would I find the x-intercept here? Plug in zero for what? X, yep. Wait, that would give me the y-intercept. What do I, if I want the, okay, let's change it up. If I want the y-intercept, that means where is my graph on the y-axis? All of these points, the x value is zero, right? So let's plug in a zero right here to find the y-intercept. So I'll get negative 1 over 0 minus 5 is negative 5 plus 3. Guys, can y'all type in your calculator what's negative 1 over negative 5? Negative point two or positive point 0.2 yeah. plus 3, so 3.2. Okay, so your y-intercept is this. This is your y-intercept. You just plug in 0. Okay, y-intercept, you plug in zero for x. Now, how do you find the y or the x intercept? Plug in zero for y. So let's do that together. It'll be zero equals negative one over x minus five plus three. Okay, how do we solve for x? What would I do first? Good, subtract three on both sides. So I get negative 3 equals negative 1 over x minus 5. Now, what do I do? Good. Multiply both sides by x minus 5. Multiply this side by x minus 5. This cancels. What I am left with is, we can distribute this. 
negative 3x plus 15 equals negative 1, right? Then you subtract 15, subtract 15. You get negative 3x equals, what's this? Negative 16. It looks like we're going to get a fraction. When you type this into your calculator, what will that be? X is what? 5.3 repeated. Okay, so if I wanted to graph this prettier, I'm going to go ahead and graph this for you guys. I know that my asymptote is at 3 and 5. And my x-intercept is at 5.3, so about right here. And I know my y-intercept is right here at 3.2, so right around there. So this will be my graph. Make sense? All right. 